Let's team for calling all of us in over here. And it's a great time. Though it was 2.30, means you have kept the schedule as 2.30. So in between lunch, it becomes very difficult. <coughs> anyway, people are very hungry, hungry for their food. But keeping the session short, I will just give my panelists about three minutes time each so that they can speak on the topic which has been there for the panel discussion. So we'll start from left hand side or right hand side. <laughs> Um, good afternoon all. I think, you know, uh, I'm from the healthcare industry. Basically, I'm a dean, faculty of licenses, Vinaya Commission, Research Foundation, Salem. So I, uh, I know, like, you know, all the people will be in, you know, hurry to go for their lunch. So I would like to cut short my things. Um, I would like to discuss about uh, the innovation and entrepreneurship like you no know, uh, related to economic growth. I would like to discuss about the health care, health education, what exactly the innovation takes place nowadays and entrepreneurship also. So innovation, uh, you know, uh, being a doctor, uh, when we had you know, studies uh, during in 1990s, uh, we had a you know anatomy in anatomy hall. We had a dissection. In the dissection hall, we used to have you know uh, uh, we used to you know do all the dissection uh, going through the uh, human bodies. Now, at present stage, the holographic education has come out in kind of virtual learning rather than going into the you know uh, dissection. You can see holographic visualization of the whole, uh, whole human bodies, like you can see like what is a nerve and, and all those things. So that is the innovation you know, took place uh, in recent uh, health education, in mo mo mostly in medical field. Sir, can I interrupt you in a while? Uh, we are just adding one more person to this panel. Okay? Sorry? We are adding one more person to this panel. One more person to this panel. Uh, I'd like to call on stage Dr. Manju Gupta, Director, ASM Group of Institute uh, for this panel. Thank you, ma'am. And uh, please continue, and sorry for the interruption. No problem. And uh, one more thing is the innovation took place in the education sector, in health education, uh, uh, 3D printing. Uh, related to any trauma happens in uh, you know, any fractures or any brain uh, injuries that happen. So, uh, previously, the, we used to, you know, take a MRI and CT scan and, you know, we'll go to the, like, what, what, if we have to do the surgeries on the repairs, all those things. Now, the 3D printing devices where you can s see the uh, whole anatomy of the, you know, brain or whole anatomy of the uh, legs or something like, so where you can fix the, by printing that uh, machine, you can get and you can fix it up. So 3D printing has come out and uh, uh, you have, you know, uh, e-learning divisions where we are, you know, we are, we are into the, um, all the, like, you know, previously used to see the patients and get to know the, all the, you know, medical things like murmurs and all those things. Now everything has come up in an e-learning version. So the innovation took place. In entrepreneurship, like, you know, the, uh, regarding about the economic growth, economic growth, when you have, a, you know, Encouraging the economic growth, you need to have a high skills force also. In NSDC, like you no, know, the National Skill Development Corporation says right now, we need 5.5 5 .5 million people to be employed and they need in the healthcare sector. So that's why the NSDC has started and in the National Skill Development Corporation is working on that. So uh, based on that, definitely, you know, uh, the economic level will be increased in India by you know, doing this NSDC and PMKV, all this process. Thank you. Okay, can pass it on. Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Jay Anand. Basically, I'm the scientist, but I'm registrar of Noida International University. I'm the man of electromagnetic, electromagnetotherapy, biophysics. Innovation. 
basically uh, the economy of country is related to the innovations of the country and innovation is directly related to the higher education if we have the higher education in proper order the innovation definitely will come out unfortunately in our country the innovations are not up to the level of global rank that means we need to introspect we need to revise we need to think over it where we are lacking what kind of changes we need to do few months back aict has changed the curriculum model curriculum have implement, has implemented they have realized that because the students are overburdened that is why the innovations are not coming up that is why the credit is decreased i feel as today there was a session of ppp that is public private partnership we all the private sectors as well as the government institutions are having the infrastructures but we all are working in isolation we all are working in isolation can we pool the infrastructure to make the innovation of country like certain instrumentation rtpcr is having with some institution ms gc ms is having in another institution so these are the instruments of minimum crore so if we can make the consortium kind of thing with the private and public institutions then innovation may enhance now the private sectors are having a kind of pain why whenever you apply for grant to dst icmr wherever dst sorry dbt or any organization csir ugc they will treat you like the step child why they feel that innovation may not come from private institutions i'm asking that since independence number of infrastructure have been developed in the government institutions still the innovations are very poor in india except it sector that is the new one so we need to introspect i think innovation unless and until uh, i have patented one instrument that is the bone stimulator bone stimulator which can reverse the osteoporosis post menopausal osteoporosis but i faced lot of challenges in innovation so we should think over it and facilitate the process of innovation so that the innovation of country may enhance thank you good afternoon everybody my name is mahesh ayer and uh, uh, just to give you a quick uh, introduction about myself uh, come with close to about 18 20 years of hr experience in the industry and then got into a journey to transform the lives of people in india especially the tier 3 tier 4 uh, cities of india so the fundamental disconnect that i see when i went to the grassroots level innovation cannot happen in just tier 1 as an institute it's a very big myth that all the beautiful minds are available only in tier 1 and that's a very big disconnect i would say when we really went into the system when we went into the grassroots level because our philosophy and ethos is skill formation and employability enrichment when we try to align so when we try to align the requirement of the industry with what is needed in the industry the first thing that i realized is that the definition of innovation and entrepreneurship is very different from education to education boundaries for somebody innovation is about just writing a very strong curriculum 
So for some institutes, innovation is about just creating an innovation lab and they just have a check in the box. And I think the biggest failure that I would see if we do not pull up our socks there is that until and unless we don't see a correlation between what is the need of the economy from an you know, evolution standpoint, it will be regardless what you're trying to innovate. We have some beautiful minds outside who are exhibitors. They are all from India. Those products are Indian products. And the kind of evolution that they have brought into the education industry has been remarkable. One thing that I could certainly pass this across to the audience is that we as Indian, uh, you know, as a, India as a country, I think we should really have a very strong governance system. I was hearing one of the panel yesterday that there is a lot of plagiarism when it comes to research papers. The question is, where is all this research papers getting you know, translated into? What is it getting translated into? Are those research papers just to fill a curriculum vitae of a professor in an education system? Or those research papers are actually seeing the day of the light with any particular industry? How many, if I have to look at the research papers of different PhDs and try to just translate that into a whiteboard saying that this, is, this research paper is for retail, this is for telecom, this is for IT, how many such research papers has been translated into a product? Which is not only helping India as a country, but also we are going globally. So in the next session, when you talk about global education standards, one of the important aspects to deliberate as a group is that do we have a very good governance system in India where we are actually putting a right governance framework for the researchers in India? And secondly, who are the industry experts who are actually putting their effort to mentor such researchers and try to bridge so, that gap between sir, industry and academia? Thank you. Hello, good afternoon. I'm Dr. Suresh Shukrande, Dean Faculty of Science and Technology, University of Mumbai, and Principal of KJ Sumay Institute of Engineering, Cyan Campus. There are various schemes of AICT, AQIS, Quality Improvement Schemes. Number of schemes are there, 25, 30 schemes are there. Wherein, in this today's panel discussion, we have club this two, the one, one is innovation and the other one is entrepreneurship. Along with this, I will touch to the third and fourth also about hackathon and about model curriculum. As far as innovation is concerned or entrepreneurship is concerned, it's very less was happening in various uh, in, in engineering institutes and in pro professional colleges and that too in very few institutes. So, initiatives taken by AICT, most of you know, all of you know, under the uh, leadership of this MHRD department. MIC, MHRD's Innovative Innovation Council is formed, wherein thousands of college colleges are identified to form the innovation cell. And for that, 1,600 applications were there, 1,000 colleges were identified. And whatever this innovation was happening in few, few institutes. Now it is the right platform provided by the AICT and uh, uh, it is going to be mentored by AICT in all the institutes and with this initiative of AICT, the ranking of India at 1617 was at, uh, world ranking was 81, which is shifted to now jump to 57 and with this new innovation cell, it will raise to 40, 13 few years down the line, we hope so. That is one. And uh, uh, right, right form of mentorship is going to be provided by AICT, various uh, details, details and everything are going on the AICT website. Second thing is, thing is of entrepreneurship. Every institute can have the student groups mentored by the faculty members and submit a project proposal, business proposal, and grant will be given by AICT for this entrepreneurship. So with this initiative also, there is a possibility for improvement, improvement, improving this uh, entrepreneurship or to establish first of all e-cell in the institute and 
to increase this entrepreneurship in the institutes. And the previous panelists we were talking about the two things. One is about placement and one talk about the result. Or even we as a parent, when we go to any institute for taking admissions, what we see, two parameters. One is how, is how much is the placement and how much is the result. Still, still. So very less is talk about higher studies and very, very less talk about entrepreneurship. So day has come and that's why yes, it has taken initiative on these two parameters and to support this or indirect uh, uh, parachute of this is hackathon competition. Problem statement is given by the AICT and any student from any institute mentored by a faculty can take part in this competition and in 36 hours a solution has to be provided. Maybe in the form of a soft, a soft solution or a, maybe a prototype. And venture capitalists, capitalist, bankers or whatever the support is required is made available by AICT to this. So this way it is going to boost this innovation or entrepreneurship in the uh, uh, education system and the last one which I want to say is about the model, model curriculum. It is framed by the AICT in a few of the disciplines and it is instructed to all the universities to follow it. Let me tell you at the, as a being Dean Faculty of Technology University of Mumbai, we have already introduced credit and grading system. As per the guideline of UGC, in academic year 11, 12 only, and exactly in four years down the cycle, yes, one, one half minute, exactly in uh, four years down the cycle, we have introduced choice-based credit system. Why I'm saying this? Because the earlier panel talked about the, uh, the, bas uh, the basic subjects, values, <coughs> ethics, and about the subject which are to be taught to the engineers about financial management, environmental management, IPR, and all those. That is already inculcated in the course curriculum, which is going to be helpful to the all-around development of the institute, all-around development of the in every individual and to the institute. Thank you very much. Okay, good afternoon, friends. My name is Audut Pol. Uh, I'm a director of a management institute uh, based in Pune, Sibar. Uh, let's look at certain statistics. Uh, 1.3 billion population, 0.7% was the GER, that is the gross enrollment ratio in higher education and independence. Today we are at 25.3% as per the statistics. Let's look at the number of technical institutes. We are about 100, hovering about 100 during the time of independence. Today the statistics shows we are more than 10,000 plus. So as far as numbers are concerned, we are really doing fantastically well. The question is, are we really providing something what the industry wants, something what the market wants? That is the crux today that we need to discuss. The topic is innovation entrepreneurship for fostering growth in higher education. So these two points of innovation and entrepreneurship are the crux right now based on which the growth will happen. Now innovation can happen on different fronts, but it is the need of the hour right now because according to certain experts, the number of 10,000 might come down. Certain institutes might not be in a position to sustain. If you can look at the statistics also, we'll find a lot of institutes are either reducing their intake or are applying for closure. So what it basically means is for even for survival now, uh, there is a possibility that people will go in for an, uh, has uh, education institutes or people in that particular foray has to go in for innovation. Uh, certain, about a minute on entrepreneurship, if you, again, uh, everybody uh, for the last few years has been talking about the demographic dividend which India has. If you look at the statistics today, more than 65% of the people are about age of, are less than age of 35. More than 50% are the age, you know, less than 25. So if we are really going to have that kind of a number right now into the market, it will be a really huge challenge for the industry right now to provide jobs or provide job opportunities to them. So there is a need right now, plus there is a growing middle class who have greater aspirations. If you combine this thing put together, entrepreneurship seems to be a fantastic solution to cater what the society will. That is from my point. Thank you.
Good afternoon. I am Dr. Manju, uh, Director to ASM Group of Institutions. It has already been discussed in the last panel discussion that there is a very big gap between the industry and the academia. But I personally feel that gap has been bridged a while. Lot of innovation is happening at the front of, you know, higher education. AICT is taking lot of initiative every day, uh, every other day, I'm getting a mail from AICT that we need to do a technothon or maybe a different kind of program for the student that foster to the innovation. But now the point and the question is, there, is, there should be a strong mechanism to assess and analyze that how the innovation is happening in the institutions. There should be a curriculum which leads to the innovation so that we should not prepare only the engineer, but yes, the entrepreneurs who can, you know, work towards the technological development so that actually the entrepreneurship can, you know, foster in the society which leads to the economic growth of the country. I really feel this is one of the wonderful topic that entrepreneurship and innovations are the need of the society, need of the country, which definitely will lead to the uh, economy of the country. Thank you. In fact, everybody is hungry and our panelists also <laughs> have been very, very brief in getting things down. Maybe last uh, ball I'll have to bat. So without going further, in fact, our panelists really nicely put on scientists and uh, people who are in medical field plus professionals in different field. They have put their views in a very nice manner. I have one, say maybe acronym, we call it as CIE. C is for creativity, I is for innovation, and E is for entrepreneurship. Without creativity, innovation doesn't happen. And innovation, if when it's taken to the market, then enterprise comes into picture. Creativity, as somebody has said very nicely, I just quote, act of seeing things that everyone sees, while making connection no one else has made. So everybody sees things. One example which I can give is, everybody sees accidents. Why they are happening, how they are happening, there are very much debates. But actually how these have come up and what is the major cause, maybe through the ground radiations, which was one path-breaking things which we had done. So it was an observation part which was there. From that we innovated and found out that we can make some sort of an attonation system, which is being put up. And on expressway it has been tested and found that it's good. And the last part is putting down to market, that stage is there. As rightly pointed out by the scientist panelists on our group, maybe osteoporosis or maybe something related to direct application to the system, wherein only chemical aspects were considered for development. Correct me if I'm right. But he has put in an electromagnetic aspect into that, wherein up till date, most of the time we were more concerned with the medicines which are chemical based. But he's put in an electric and electromagnetic component to it, which does the healing in form or the other. The same concept sir, works with the accident part, wherein these fields which are there coming from ground are interacting. So in fact, when we innovate, or when we think about different, different ideas, and the best place to nurture ideas is nothing but educational institutes. Wherein young minds are there, you give a problem to them, they'll solve it in a different fashion, give you a totally different solution which you have never thought of. Only gap which remains is bringing that idea, very small idea, into a mature idea, and then putting up to the enterprise. For enterprise, you require a very good skill set of putting it to the market. An entrepreneur knows it very nicely, and slowly he puts that thing into place. And once it comes to the market, it's just like mobile phones, most of the things are there. But when it, they are come to the market, everybody is using it. And today we can't live without it. So from that point of view, any innovation which is there, it starts somewhere. Maybe with somebody's great idea, and then slowly, gets into an enterprise which is of use. But somewhere, some person is very much mad of an idea that this thing should happen. And that culture, unless and until we give it to our students, whether you do mistakes, get things on, learn from it, and work on, 
then and then only we will be getting ideas on daily basis and once we get those ideas we provide an environment in an educational institute to nurture those ideas mature them and then when an enterprise comes in takes up that idea and gets, gets on similarly there are some problems which are there as he rightly pointed out hackathon government of india has identified so many problems they give a problem and you may be amazed in 36 hours our young minds can identify and solve the problem so it's not that innovation is not happening innovation is there only thing is we do not know our strengths most of the time i was listening even to the earlier part we show, tell more of our weakness somebody should do like that somebody should do like that it doesn't come from our heart we never talk about strengths we talk only about weaknesses and that's the very thing which is pulling down most of the interviews i ask him any student who comes in tell me your strengths he says he's just quiet he doesn't say anything but if you, you are not good at so many things he'll just no i'm not good at standing i'm not good at spelling i'm not good at english my things are not there he'll just give a list of 10 people, things but when he tells about strength okay i can speak nicely i have knowledge so what is the strength of an education institute the strength of an educational institute is knowledge and you have an environment for it what we are forgetting is we are never strengthening our strengths we are only talking about weaknesses and that is reducing our innovative capability and once we identify our strengths and innovate then prosperity would be there i thank all the panelists i won't take much time between you and lunch i remember one of our uh, one meeting wherein we had one of the aict member uh, jaspreet singh if i am maybe here he was also given ki elects wale aise hi karte hai khane ke pehle hame rakh dete hai maybe we have tried to keep you from lunch thank you very much <laughs>